Hi guys, my name's Sam, I'm from Pioneer DJ, and we're up here or down here at Synthetic Pro Audio. So this video is going to be a little bit different to the other ones. What we're going to do is we're going to give you information, advice on how to get in the industry in different ways. We've got four people here, all with different backgrounds. So I'll start with myself. I was a DJ, I'll probably say X now because I'm not really gigging anymore. But I was once a DJ, I was doing clubs, I was doing mobile stuff. Um, then I got heavily into production, started making music, got a few tracks signed and then I decided to go to uni a little bit backwards but I went to uni to study music production got my degree and then four years later and it literally took four years of hard graft I'm sure we've all been there hard graft of doing all the uh, industry can offer me at the time there was free work involved and I started getting paid started making contacts networking was a key thing for me and then I managed to land a job as the product developer UK and Allen for Pioneer DJ so that's my background, and we're going to go through these gentlemen here and listen to their background. Hi there, my name's Steve from Synthetic. Uh, I started off as a DJ when I was 14, soon, soon joined the Smoke Screen Sound System, doing the free parties around the UK and Europe. And then soon after, our friends from Smoke Screen started a record label called Drop Music. And then, and then we got in the studio, started writing tracks. Soon after, we started touring all over with agents and stuff. Uh, so basically, and basically, we did that for 20 odd years now. And I've come to an end and I've started Synthetic Pro Audio. So what we're trying to say is here is there's loads of different routes you can take in the industry, whether it be education, whether it be retail, whether it be what Robbie's doing down at Pirate Studios, Sam's doing, what Simon's doing as a producer still. Uh, that's about it. All we can say is, don't do it on your own. Get a good crew around you, and basically, network. network as much as you can. Start your own nights off, get people from out of town to play at your night, and you play at their night, and network, and just, do one other thing as well, stay true to yourself. Don't try and write stuff that's in at the time. Just write what you want to write, and it'll come to you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Robbie Duncan. I'm PR and uh, outreach for Pirate Studios, uh, which run about sort of uh, well over 300 studios now throughout the UK, which are rehearsal rooms for bands and also DJ rooms for, for, for DJs to hire on a 24-hour basis. And the reason I got into that is that uh, probably the same sort of time as you, Steve, yeah. uh, back, in the, back in the day, was a DJ, uh, an event DJ for about 15, 20 years, doing large events for corporates, uh, fashion shows, that sort of thing. And really pretty much met through contacts, a, a range of people in the industry. Um, and also with my background in sales and marketing in, in the past as well, I approached uh, Pirate Studios and uh, joined them uh, in the PR and uh, PR division. Uh, and that's my, really my story in, in short. Hi, I'm um, Simon from The Sun Lounge. And I basically got into the the industry through well starting to DJ at home like a lot of you probably would in your bedroom just learning and then we started our own night um, obviously inviting lots of different DJs to come and play for us and then I started getting into producing a little bit while we were still running this night we ended up creating a track got this dub cut to um, a dub plate because obviously we never had the things like CD, you know, the media players and that back then. So um, we had an actual dub plate cut. Um, I played that out. We had Clive Henry from Peace Division playing on our night then. Heard the track, said, right, I want that for my label. Low pressings, right? Yeah, it was on low pressings. It was on low pressings. So, um, yeah, we signed that up and that basically got the ball rolling. And then other labels, I think 80, uh, Camouflage Recordings, which is part of 83 West in Canada, they um, got in touch with Low Pressings and said, how can we get these people on our label? And they, so they got through to us, contacted us, contacted us, did a few tracks for their um, label. Um, and yeah, it basically snowballed, um, snow, snowboarding, snowballing from there. And um, I did a bit of snow, I did a, I did a little bit of snowboarding and got a few gigs there as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so guys, that's that's the four of us. And obviously, as you can tell, different backgrounds. I'm just going to touch up on what Steve said. I think one of the key things, um, especially if you're up and coming, or even if you're just getting into this industry, is networking is that I'm sure we can all agree. Networking is, is, is a major part of this industry. It's getting to know people. I'm a big believer, um, not for so long, because you do have to live, big believer in a little free work every now and again, just to let them know that you're interested in the industry, you want to learn. And yeah, so the next thing I'm going to look at is equipment now 
I'm pretty sure we have quite a diverse set of DJs here. Um, and I'm going to ask a few questions to these guys here. Me, for me, it was always starting off on the vinyl. And, but at the time, the CDJs were pretty much controlling the industry. They were, what are we talking about, 2007? So they've been out really seven years, I think. Yeah. And they were controlling uh, vinyl, but through digital a digital way. So you, it was reacting like a vinyl. But clubs were kind of jumping on the back of this. And because of the digital era, um, CDJ is where you would find. I went down a different route, and, and I still went down an old school route of buying a pair of 1210s, Mark II, classic, I've still got them now, um, and just a heap of vinyl, and I just learned how to mix, and I don't think I ever left my bedroom. My mum was really pleased to have me as a son during that, that period of time. Um, and I just, I just learned until I could mix two tracks together. And then no matter what I went to, I always had the information that I'd taken from mixing on vinyl. So I'm pretty sure all three of you have done the vinyl era, but one question I've got to ask, and I'm going to point this at Robbie here. If you had to pick, <laughs> if you had to do a gig and you was picking vinyl, CDJ or controller range, what would it be and why? That's a good question, Sam, because the thing is being a DJ is that we love, uh, obviously music first, but kit is our thing, isn't it? We'll yeah. buy anything and um, try everything out. Um, and I suppose if I'm going to do a, a gig, I'll probably do the go for the CDJs first first call. But as I, I spoke to you earlier, didn't I? Yes, I've yeah. got one of those yeah, now, yeah, and uh, exactly. I'm a convert because it really does give me that flexibility of going where I want to go. Um, and the setup's always the same when I get to the place as well because and of the Paris kit. Studios has got has got a setup of, of, of yeah, yeah. We are yeah we have a full suite of the of the club you know, club standard kit in all our studios. So whilst we're on the subject then, if you could just, you know, just a couple of seconds just to just to explain what Pirate Studios is and what you can offer people, especially because this is educational, people come up and come in. How can they use you to better themselves as, as a DJ or even a producer or a, an artist? Right, well, there's so many options really with us at uh, Pirate Studios. First off, we are a, uh, have a facility in all our buildings. They're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you want to come in, practice your art, you've got an opportunity to do it. The rates for the rooms are really competitive and uniform across the whole UK as well. I mean, literally 18 cities in the UK are covered by us now. We have a new studio in New York, so anybody who's listening and watching from New York, we've got a place there now. Also coming on board will be two in Germany. Great, fantastic, thank you. So, moving forward from your choice here, um, I'm now going to point my attention to Steve. And this is, I'm kind of telling a story here. So, say for example, you were to use Pirate Studios to better yourself as a DJ. The question is, where do you go for equipment? Now, if you're around the Nottingham area, I can, I can probably say there's only one place that I know I'd go. So, Steve's going to tell you a little bit about Synthetic and what they can offer. Yeah, so here at Synthetic, we're more than just a DJ store. We basically are a hub for the local dance music community, as in such like a record shop used to be. But we also do free masterclasses, free events with DJs that have never played before. I mean, Robbie, you did one with us, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, so we, we, did, we do ones where we've got people like Crazy P, Simon, and then we get DJs that have never played before who have been in the store who will play next to these DJs at, at an event. We also do one-to-one -one lessons with our head tutor, Chris Goss, and we basically know everything to know there is about any of this kit. So you can basically come down here, get a free lesson on anything to see what, which way you want to go, and we'll, we'll support you all the way through your whole career. Perfect. So there you have it, guys. You've got somebody who works within the studio industry that can provide the equipment, and then you've got somebody there where you can purchase equipment from and, you know, further train yourself. So... Now I've spoken about these two gentlemen here, I'm now going to move to Simon because Simon's going to tell us a little bit about his production background. How did you get into it? And if you have one key advice for the listeners and the, and the viewers, what would it be? Somebody's looking to get into production, where would they go? Oh, yeah, I mean, I started getting in production. How did I get into production? Is that yeah, what you want yeah, to know rather yeah. than the DJing? Um, again, just starting, starting at home, having a little studio at home, just building it up. I mean, nowadays, you can do a lot just on a computer. Um, with with some controllers and stuff, so um, so that that's kind of how I started. Then I built when when I got my releases on low pressings, when I got my releases on camouflage, and well, a lot of US labels actually. I started to put the money back into studio production. Yeah. And sorry, studio gear. Yeah. So I was putting all my money back in, and then obviously producing tracks, networking, yeah. um, getting around, networking, 
go to events, support your local events, support support your local DJs, and maybe maybe pass pass music on. I mean, obviously the internet, there's there's so many people going to be doing that. And yes, still do that. Use social media, but also get out there, get out there, get involved, meet people. Can I just say one thing, Sam? This is a good good thing about synthetic because we get so many diverse people down here where people have met. So our vocalists, I've met producers, DJs have met other DJs, I've done remixes, I've met you, you've met me, we love each other. <laughs> yeah, so there you have it, guys. There's there's some, some advice on really getting in the industry. I think to conclude all this, I think basically from industry standard people like ourselves, I think networking is the key thing. You know, there are so many free services out there, especially from Pioneer DJ themselves, Synthetic, Pirate Studios. You know, there's so many free services to learn this. And it is just a case of putting the hard work in yourself. You know, we can only take you so far and then you've kind of got to go the full length yourself. Networking is a key thing. As Simon said, support your local DJs. Find out who your local artists are. Um, learn from each other and just grow with each other. So, guys, that is um, it's part one of a few videos we're going to do on this educational um, this this educational video channel that we're going to create. Um, I'd like to thank these three here, and yeah, keep in touch. We've been at Synthetic Pro Audio. Thanks very much. <laughs>